the 2009 WNBA Finals presented by Adidas. U.S. Airways Center here in Phoenix getting set for game one between the top seed from the East, the Indiana Fever, the top seed from the West, the Phoenix Mercury. It is a best of five series. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you with us here in Phoenix. Terry Gannon along with Carolyn Peck. Which will win out? Great offense or great defense? It's not quite as simple as that, but it does break down along those lines, Carolyn. Even the individual matchup we're going to watch throughout the series, Diana Taurasi guarded by Tamika Ketchings. Well, and Diana Taurasi, Terry, led the WNBA in scoring. She puts up shots at times you think there's no way that shot's going in, but it does. She's going to have her hands full tonight with the biggest thief in the WNBA. <laughs> Defensive player of the year, Tamika Ketchings. And she will be guarding her. She'll try not to switch. She'll try to stick right with Diana Tarazi, who led the league in scoring and this afternoon was named the league's MVP this year in 2009. So the Fever in the finals for the very first time, their 10th year as a franchise, they finally got past Detroit. The last three years, Detroit bumped them out and they just beat Detroit to get here to the finals. The Mercury, of course, here in 2007, they won it all two seasons ago. They got here in 98 and were beaten by Houston, but Diana Taurasi looking for yet another title, and Tamika Ketchings trying to lead the fever on the defensive end to a championship. June Corteau, Daryl Humphrey, Tom Maurer, your officiating crew, and we are underway here in game one. I think this matchup is going to be very interesting. Indiana's field goal percentage, the lowest in the WNBA, and they are in the finals of the WNBA playoff. Never happened before. Kelly Bevilacqua, who is not normally the threat from the outside, buries a three to start the game, and here's some pressure up the floor. It's one of the things Lynn Dunn talked about, to slow down Phoenix, make them have to score in their half-court sets instead of, as soon as you score, they're headed the other way. Tamika Johnson steps on the baseline, so the first turnover of the game. Lynn Dunn in her second year as the head coach of the Fever, a longtime college coach for over 25 years, and then led the storm as a general manager and a head coach, and now is here in Indiana. Spin move, Tammy Sutton Brown along the inside gets it back, and that's one way the Fever, they're, they're trying to stay in it through their offensive rebound. Corey Gaines, in his second year as the head coach, played three seasons at UCLA with Reggie Miller, shooting. by the way. And then transferred to Loyola She's Marymount. Around, had her hand straight up. And played with Bo Kimball and Hank Gathers, those great teams, and learned this up and down tempo from Paul Westhead. Well, and when the Phoenix Mercury won the WNBA championship in 2007, it was that up tempo. And I think that what the Phoenix Mercury did is they outlasted teams because when it got to the, be that fourth quarter, other teams just didn't have their legs. Tangela Smith picking up her first foul. Diana Tarazi, a part, a big part of that championship team just a couple of years ago. Sutton Brown, a 75% free throw shooter with the free throw. So the 5 nothing lead, Indiana on top. Watch how long Indiana keeps up that backcourt pressure. It's already taken about seven seconds off the shot clock before Phoenix was able to get into their offense. Little help from Sutton Brown as Tarazi came off the screen. Tangela Smith, though, buries the three, and she can shoot that. She led the WNBA in three-point percentage. A foot was on the line. That's a deuce. Douglas all the way in, and the bucket for Katie Douglas in her ninth year out of Purdue. Won an NCAA title, went to the finals twice with Connecticut. Catchings with the block on Tarazi. Bevilacqua, who also went to the finals with Seattle and won a title with the Storm back in 2004. Catchings the miss, Tarazi threw it right to Douglas. Indiana, if they don't, don't get the initial shot, either off the break or their offense, they'd love to run some clock. But they will, as we've talked about, push it up a little bit. They will, and the key for Indiana is they have to get second chance opportunities. On missed shots, they've got to crash the board. Tarazi, in and out. Offensive rebound, Tangela Smith in the putback. Smith, the 12th year veteran out of Iowa. And the seventh all-time leading scorer in WNBA history. She doesn't get much mentioned for that. 
she doesn't. And also, Terry, she's played in, she's second most in play WNBA games, second only to Vicki Johnson. Hoffman, the fadeaway, barely draws iron. Kathy Pondexter, who was fourth in the league in scoring this year, out of Rutgers. Johnson from Tarazi, and that's a three-pointer. Tamika Johnson, another one from Phoenix who can shoot that three. Sutton Brown and the foul. She'll go to the free throw line. Pondexter, late getting there, commits the foul. Tamika Johnson is looking to be an offensive threat, not something that she did when she was the point guard of the L.A. Sparks. Now here at Phoenix, Corey Gaines has given her a lot of confidence, and she's looking for that shot anytime she gets it. Now she wasn't really a threat at all from beyond the arc with L.A., and Corey hey. said, look, it's all about what's in her head. Both coaches, of course, wired for sound tonight. We'll hear from them throughout. And Corey Gaines said Tamika Johnson isn't even reached her potential yet. Next year, he foresees she's going to be even better. Phoenix, which won two of three from San Antonio, and then two of three from L.A. to get here. Tarazi knocks down the first three of the game. First lead for the Mercury. Nice move along the baseline. Ebony Hoffman, a sixth-year player out of USC last year, was the most improved player in the WNBA. She had a big effort in that decisive Game 3 win over Detroit. Smith makes sure she's behind the line. You're getting a look early at what Phoenix wants to do on offense. Well, one of the things Lynn Dunn wants to do, her goals are to defend the three. Swap twos for twos, but you're not going to keep yourself in the ball game as long as you let Phoenix get the open three-point shot. Catching's off to Hoffman. Strong drive again. Ebony Hoffman, another bucket. In game three, it was the first time she had been in double figures in nine games. So she Maybe playing her best basketball right now, Carolyn. Yeah, but well, I'm sorry, Terry, to interrupt you before, but the thing that the Indiana has to do is get out on the three-point line, force the penetration, one-on-one -on -one defense. Help was late. Douglas missed it, though. Here comes Tarazi. Hoffman back to defend. Diana with a hesitation. And if they allow Phoenix to do that all night, they can't stay in this one. Well, and that's how Phoenix makes their living. They're scoring in transition, either off forcing turnovers or off rebounds. At Tarazi on her back and the physical move. Taken away by Catchings. How about Tamika on the offensive end? She could make it happen. She's strong enough with the matchup against Cappy. She's big enough, too, to be able to go to the basket. Foul away from the ball, and it's going to be on Tamika Johnson. That's her first and the team's third. He's yet to see a team foul called on Indiana. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay. Jesus said, Swanye three. off the bench. You're right. So the second-year player from UConn comes in for Corey Gaines. Terry, one of the things Indiana was able to do against Detroit was get to the free throw line. Didn't just rely on being a jump shooting team, but they were trying to go inside and attacking off penetration. Got a lot of opportunities from the free throw line. Shot clock down to two. Katie Douglas with a three. Douglas, who led the league in scoring the second half of the season. She averaged over 20 a game since the All-Star break. You know, the last time she played here, she had 28 points against right. the Phoenix Mercury. They split the two matchups during the regular season. Each team winning on the other's home court. Swanee with the miss. Here comes Bevilacqua as they look to run. Tully, coast to coast. Indiana giving Phoenix a little bit of their own medicine. High low, right through the hands of the Cole Willingham. So the sixth year player from Auburn loses it out of bounds and it will be Indiana basketball. 7-0 run by the Fever right now to take a five point lead in game one. ESPN's presentation of the WNBA Finals is presented by Adidas. Impossible is nothing. And in part by IHOP. IHOP's gone NFL. Try the all pro lineup only at IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy.
Back in Phoenix, game one of the WNBA Finals presented by Adidas Indiana with an early five-point lead here in the first quarter. Phoenix tied a franchise record with 23 wins. Championship team back in 07 at 23 as well. They led the league. Look at that, Carolyn. In points, field goals, free throws, assists per game. Most of the offensive categories this year and the great duo of Tarazi and Pondexter. Well, you get great scoring from Tarazi and Pondexter, but you also have to complement the bench. And when you bring in, first you had a rookie, Dewana Bonner, then you add to that Penny Taylor joining the team. That's a lot of offensive power. They did have to deal with some adversity this year. Their best player, Diana Tarazi, back on July 2nd, charged with a DUI and also speeding, and that case is still pending, but she's talked about that and said, look, I take full responsibility for uh, mistakes, and uh, I've learned a lot from that. This afternoon, she was named the MVP of the league. Catchings with the miss, thrown out, and will stay at the Indiana Inn. And the officials will chat and sort this out. You look at Indiana, and, and you do on some level shake your head at the way they've been able to get to this point. I mean, they're the worst shooting team in the WNBA. You mentioned that through the playoffs. Their field goal shooting is less than their opponent. Their rebounds, they're shooting from three-point land, yet they just are tough enough to beat you. Katie Douglas picking up her first foul. And a technical has been called. You look at the numbers there, and it, how do they win? Yeah, we're open. That's what they want us to do. But they, they won't go away. It's their tough defensive presence that Indiana has been able to keep themselves into the ball game. But Kevin Pondexter, she retaliated, a little upset with Katie Douglas in the foul. And what Katie was trying to do was stop a transition basket, foul her before she got the shooting opportunity. I know. I know. Catchings, an 87% free throw shooter, makes the free throw at the other end. So Pondexter, the technical foul after Douglas committed the personal. Best of five in this series. Whenever you get a break, just foul. So they're going to try to foul us every time we get a break. And it goes 2-2-1. Two, two, two games here, two if necessary, obviously, in Indiana, and then one back here at Phoenix. You heard that strategy that, that maybe Indiana is going to try to do that. Well, that, that's one way to stop the ball. The only thing is that you can't afford to let can't afford to let Katie Douglas or Tamika Catchings be the one that's doing the fouling when they're going in transition. Tamika Catchings picking up her first foul. Turnover gives it back to the Fever. Catchings kicks it out. Jessica Moore, who's just come in. Hoffman underneath from Bevilacqua. And Indiana getting some work inside now. Well, the one thing that Indiana's doing that L.A. went away from in game three is attacking the paint. Yep. There's a huge size mismatch. When you've got Jessica Moore, Ebony Hoffman, Tammy Sutton Brown in the paint. Two-pointer for Douglas, and they're rolling. They've got a double-digit lead on the road here in game one. A 12-0 run by the Fever. Now, L.A. has the, had the size advantage, certainly, in that series, but Diana Tarazi reminded us, you know, the Fever, they're tall, and they're also wide. I mean, they're big bodies. Foul on the Fever underneath on the rebound. Indiana's doing a nice job in transition. They've always got their head in. They're checking into the paint. Tully Bevilacqua, I'll get it out, <laughs> does a nice job of finding Ebony Hoffman down low. Ebony Hoffman picking up her first foul. You got her? You yep, have yep, mentioned yep. that Tully had won a championship with the Seattle Storm. And she said she's even been wearing her championship ring a little bit mm -hmm. around her team. Speaking of one of those champions from 2007, Penny Taylor back in now or on the floor for the first time. She comes off the bench now in her eighth year from Australia. Dealing with a broken finger, which she suffered in the series against San Antonio. Inside, Dewana Bonner from Tarazi. And Bonner, the sixth woman of the year in the WNBA. Bump underneath, first foul 
on Diana Taurasi. Heather Cox is with us as well. Heather, what do you have? Well, Terry, that old adage that bad things come in threes, so true for the Mercury. Three injured fingers in the last three weeks. The most recent, as you mentioned, Penny Taylor broke the tip off of her non-shooting index finger, but Diana Taurasi, also playing with a broken finger, suffered right before the playoffs. That, too, on her non-shooting index finger, that's taped up. And Nicole Willingham with a very severe sprain on her pinky. So, guys, bad news for the hands of the Phoenix Mercury players. And you did hear that right. The tip was hanging there. Yes. That had to hurt. Corey Gaines had just talks about the toughness of Penny Taylor. One of honor picking up her first, and so they're already over the limit. Five team fouls on the Phoenix Mercury. Yeah. And Bevel Lock with the numbers sometimes misleading with her when you just look at sheer numbers. I mean, one of the top defenders at that point guard spot in the WNBA on the all defensive team again this year and does all those cliche things, all the little things. She does and was, is a great veteran for Brian January, the rookie that came in at the point position. Henry Taylor game. missed it, got it back, and buries the jumper. I and mean, it's an eight point game. Nicole Oldie in her sixth year from Kansas State off the bench now for Phoenix. Good look, Jessica Moore, fifth-year player from UConn. And like Diana Tarazi, won three titles there in college. There's that matchup. Catchings and Tarazi in the blocking fall called on Tamika Catchings, and that's two on her. And that's to the point. Well, she's talking about Diana Taurasi pushing off with that forearm. Good call. I, I thought it was a bad call. It looked like to me that Taurasi pushed off with that arm. He's just Swanye just behind the line. And it's a seven-point game. But you've got two fouls on catching, so she's got to be careful here. With a minute 18 and counting in the first, Taylor took it right away from her. The Mercury on the run. See what they can do with Taylor on the floor and Tarazi on the bench. Penny Taylor knocks down another jumper, and this time it's a three. We're on January in and threw it away. There's the hole. Jessica Moore had a hold of Dewan of Honor. Well, Penny Taylor came in when Diana Taurasi went out. She now becomes the offensive threat, and you've got to find her because in these playoffs, she's shooting the ball extremely well. So many coaches would watch the offense right now and be a little worried about the fact that there has not been an inside game for yeah, four no. games. Hey, but... Keisha! Keisha! But that's how they play. Right. They play outside the arc from the perimeter, and what they do then is cause the defense to extend, guard the three-point line. Then that opens up opportunities for penetration. Instead of the inside opening up the outside, they go the other way around. Both teams over the limit as Bonner gets the first. The rookie from Auburn and the number five pick overall in the WNBA draft. People were unsure what Dewana Bonner was going to be able to do in this league, and she ends up being Rookie of the Year. She misses at the free throw line, which is rare for that entire team. They shoot 86% from the free throw line. That's unheard of. Sutton Brown, the rebound over Oldie. Good work inside. And Tammy, a veteran and a two-time All-Star. Bonner slips away along the block and gets the easy lay-in. Sutton Brown had Bonner beat in transition. No call on Bonner. They take it right back, though. Moore to the left hand, and they're going to wipe it off. Odie, don't. You know they're there. <laughs> Lynn's trying to figure out the call, and quite frankly, so am I. Right, what's the call? What's the call? Number 31. She picked off the defender that was going to go in to defend oh, that's junior high. 
So they call it on Jessica Moore, basically a moving screen. But I'm not sure it even came into play. I don't think she was trying to screen. She just happened to step in the passage. Right. That's her second. Penny Taylor red hot in the first quarter off the bench. And we're tied at 31. How about that for a first quarter? Wow, Penny Taylor comes in when Diana Taurasi goes out and picks up the offensive force for the Phoenix Mercury. It's a record for the WNBA Finals in the first quarter. 31 points for both. Double-digit lead for the Fever, but the Mercury comes storming back. We're underway here in Game 1 of the Finals. Welcome back to Phoenix. I'm joined now by Indiana head coach Lynn Dunn. You were the worst field goal shooting team on the season, 57% in that first quarter. What's going well for you? Well, we're getting some really good early looks, I think. I think we've kind of hurt them a little bit in transition with our early on balls, and then we hurt them with some pretty good looks in the zone, too. So we're just going to take the good shots we get. You wanted to limit their threes. They already have six in this first quarter. What I do you need to do differently? We're not doing a very good job with uh, defending the three. That's something we've got to do a better job of. All right, coach. Thank you. Terry? All right, Rebecca, thanks. And Penny Taylor, a big part of that offense. Three of four off the bench, two of three already behind the arc. Well, she spotted out big time, coming down, knocking down the three anytime she's open. And she's doing a nice job, especially from the three position with the screen and pop. Instead of rolling to the basket, she's popping out for the three-point shot. Both teams pretty much, other than that early transition, uh, which Lynn Dunn talked about. So, you know, Phoenix has got to find a way to get back and stop that initially. But... Indiana doing work inside. Phoenix doing work on the perimeter. Taylor trying to do it in the paint right now. The scramble and the jump ball. You know what Phoenix has the luxury of with Penny Taylor is she can play the three or the four. Right now she's playing the three position with LaCole Willingham and Tangela Smith into the ball game. But at her size, she You're can go inside while we post look up look a guard. Indiana had a 12-0 run in that first quarter, and you saw Phoenix closed on a 12-2 run. So it's Mika Catchings right now getting a rest, as is Diana Tarazi on the other bench. Tough to stop everyone in this Phoenix offense, though. And you've got Tarazi, the leading scorer in the league, on Dexter, the fourth leading scorer. Penny Taylor, who we've seen what she can do already. She would be a starter most places. Now takes it all the way in. What a start for Taylor. Kick it outside to Mika Dixon with the miss. Dixon, the veteran who played on a couple of title teams with L.A. The kick, and there's 20 on the shot clock. Check out Penny Taylor off the on-ball screen. She splits the defense. She protects the basketball by going up in the air. And Katie Douglas says, I just can't watch it anymore. <laughs> January the jumper. Uh-uh. Beyond January, the rookie and playing at home, so to speak. She went to Arizona State. 14-2 run by the Mercury. What Indiana has got to do is defend the three, force the penetration, the two-point shot. You cannot allow Phoenix to get the three. After the block by Sutton Brown, the foul on the fever underneath. And in forcing and penetration, Tammy Sutton Brown is no way in position. Her body's even turned the wrong direction. Ebony Hoffman hey. picked up the foul, her second. And Willingham, who had a big effort in game three against L.A., misses. So game one tonight, we come back here. U.S. Airways Center for game two on Thursday, 9 o'clock Eastern time. 8.30 WNBA shoot-around. And then Sunday, 4 o'clock Eastern. Wednesday, if necessary, next uh, Friday as well. So 2-2-1. Two, two, two here in Phoenix, the higher seed, or the better record overall. And then two Indiana, and back here if necessary for game five. You talk 2-2-1. Two, two, Phoenix Mercury came out in a 2-2-1 two, two, three-quarter court press. Tammy Sutton Brown in double figures now with 10. Taylor, though, right by Sutton Brown. The three-point lead, and Phoenix is doing all of this without Diana Tarazi, the MVP of the league. 
Well, and Indiana's not been able to find an answer for Penny Taylor. They need to switch or trap her off that on ball screen. Sutton Brown, the miss. And two players lost it out of, as a coach, you hate that, don't you? Oh, it's frustrating. But this is frustrating as well. On ball screen, Tammy Sutton Brown is way too late to help on Penny Taylor coming off the on ball screen. And Corey Gaines has been able to rest Diana Tarazi for a long time. Lengthy stay at the end of the first and now to the eight minute mark here in the second. Douglas around the screen and Pondexter late getting out on her. Second team all WNBA this year, Katie Douglas. Tarazi set to check in as they swing it. Smith can shoot it, nobody out there. Starts the break for the Fever. Oh, good, good decision look. by the rookie. Great decision by the rookie to give the ball up to Ebony Hoffman. Tarazi set to check in. Duana Bonner set to check in for Phoenix. Cappy Pondexter, the fadeaway. And Cappy tends to make the normal jump shot look difficult. <laughs> she fades away whether she has to or not. But the on-ball screen is what's given Indiana trouble defensively. They've got to step up. The post player, T Tammy Sutton Brown's not coming away from the basket, so her player is setting the screen, and there's no help on a Cappy Pondexter or Penny Taylor. Under five on the shot clock. Got to go right now. Hoffman double teamed. Didn't draw iron, so the turnover gets it back to the Mercury. Nice penetration, Breon January to find Hoffman who got positioned down low, and Lynn Dunn is loving that. Odd start, six o'clock out here in Phoenix, so the crowd's still filing in the U.S. Airways Center for game one. Steve Kerr, the GM of the Suns, by the way, bought 7,000 tickets upstairs and gave them away, much like Larry Bird did in game three against Detroit back in Indianapolis, and they filled Conceco Fieldhouse. Bevilacqua takes it all the way in the second time that we've seen her do that. Indiana going and running in transition whenever the opportunity presents itself. They've got to create those easy early baskets. Have a lock with a foul. Katie, watch on ball reversal. Tully's open in the corner. We come around. Hey, on the inside, Bree. I don't want to curve that. Get on the inside. Catching still resting. Mevelock was first, second team foul on Indiana here in the second. They come out, try to trap Johnson. Under the offensive rebound, can't buy it. Douglas slices in, right past Bonner. That opportunity is there for Indiana. Off penetration, that was the one thing that was very successful for them against Detroit. Attacking off the dribble. Katie Douglas in double figures now. Smith right through her hands. Not much she's going to do with it in that spot anyway. Fever have hit their last four until that point. Contact, Sutton Brown wanted a foul, nothing called. Well, I think she was already predetermined that she was going to get contact instead of looking to score. Pondexter, the offensive foul, and that's the second on Cappy. Well, Tilly Bevilacqua gets a lot of credit for her defense. She did a nice job of moving her feet. The Indiana Fever said they are not going away. This Mer playoff is going to continue. Mercury down by three. Corey Gaines wants to get him going. Go! Go! Me! Go! Go, Cap! No! 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 No, Daryl! And a man. I'm Pam Ward back in our WNBA studios. Coming up on the IHOP Halftime Report, Rebecca Lobo will have a chat with Tamika Catchings and Hall of Famer Nancy Lieberman. We'll break down what we are seeing so far in the first half of game one of the WNBA Finals. Let's go back to Phoenix now. Terry Gannon and Carolyn Pam. Pam, thank you. Two-point game. The Fever up 44-42 on the strength of 53% from the floor so far for Indiana. Well, what Indiana has gone to was what worked for them against Detroit. Going off the dribble and attacking the paint. 
every time Indiana has that opportunity, look, the Phoenix Mercury are not even back in transition. Tully Bevilacqua does a nice job, really dribbling past four defenders to get the easy layup. Rebecca and Heather listen into the huddles. Rebecca, what'd you hear? Well, Terry, you're talking about Diana Taraji, her effectiveness when she's on the court or on that last huddle. Lynn Dunn telling her team, be smart. Diana Taraji has two fouls. They will look to get the ball to Tamika Catchings, try to pick up that third. Now over to Heather. Well, Rebecca, Phoenix is allowing Indiana to shoot 53% from the field. The issue, according to Corey Gaines, is the lapses in their rover defense. Carolyn, something for you to watch. They're going to focus on stopping penetration in that rover, meaning move the feet, get back, and do not fly according to Coach Gaines. Yeah, that rover defense, somewhat like the old amoeba defense Jerry Tarkanian used to play at UNLV. But the all-important point, that, that person in the middle going from the, the free throw line all the way down to the blocks to try to defend. There's Taraji. She plays that middle spot. But in that rover as well, you got to play on-ball defense as well. You can't get beat off the dribble and require a lot of help. Tarazi forced that contact with Bevel Aqua, and she's going to go to the line for three. The lean in, and she drew the foul. Tully's second. Go to the other side and let, let Tarazi work the lane. A reminder, you can cheer on the fever, the Mercury in style. Log on to WNBAstore.com. Now, for the largest selection of WNBA gear, including jerseys, T-shirts, and hats, plus receive free U.S. shipping on orders over $65. WNBAstore.com, one store, every team. Okay, the last thing that we heard from Lynn Dunn was to make Tarasi work the lane. What she wants offensively is ball reversal, not just getting the ball to one side and then trying to make everything happen, but work the ball from sideline hey, to sideline. Horns pop if they're in the zone. Horns pop if they're in the zone. They'd love Phoenix to have to play defense through the shot clock as much as they can. They feel like the, the Mercury really doesn't want to play a full possession defensively. 7-0 run by the Mercury right now. And now that's what Indiana's doing. They got the ball down to the baseline, need to reverse it. That's not a good sign with Katie Douglas grabbing that ankle. But Tarazi's third isn't a good sign for Corey Gaines either. So we'll see if Gaines makes a move at the 312 mark. And Katie Hobley. Oh, Diana Tarasi stepped right on top of her foot. And that really, that's a hard foul to have called on you. I mean, they just <laughs> stepped on each other's feet. Well, now with Tarasi having three fouls, I would get that ball down to the baseline. Actually, they've moved Tangela Smith to the middle of the zone, so she's guarding down low. Tammy Sutton Brown. Hoffman over Taylor Ebony, a tough shot in the lane. Tamika Catchings is a shadow wherever Diana Taurasi is, that's where she is as well. Tamika Johnson's got a couple of those. Four-point lead for the Mercury. Bevilacqua, they leave wide open, and she's got a couple of those, too. Tully can shoot that when you don't challenge her. Well, and she hit two big threes in game three against Detroit that really gave Indiana a 52-50 lead. That was one of those shots from Tarazi that makes you shake your head. They, they normally go in. Right. Johnson the other way. Catching's back, and the foul on Tamika. Tamika against Tamika one-on-one, -on -one, and Johnson got the better end of that one. Well, Ketchings thinks that she was really trying to get out of the way, but June Porto calls her for her third foul. So Tarazi to the bench with three fouls, and now Lynn Dunn's got to make a decision. Does she go to a bench after the third on Ketchings? <laughs> Only one point. Tammy! Tammy! In and out if you feel them collapsing on you. In and out sooner. I mean, I don't look into 
But now bringing in Breon January, that's a huge mismatch because Penny Taylor for the Phoenix Mercury is playing the three position. So she's going to have to be matched up with Katie Douglas. I think she's got a bit of a size, size advantage. And Taylor's already got 14 points in the game. And she's capable of really exploding like a Diana Taurasi. Back in the finals in 07, she had three games over 30 points. Has played half the year this year with the Mercury. January going to work on the offensive end. The foul on Tamika Johnson, her second. And the fourth team foul. Just can go on Taylor, coach. Just more can go on Taylor. Well, who's playing the, for what position? So both teams with four team fouls here in the second. The AL Central Division up for grabs. The Twins roll into the Motor City to take on the Tigers. Wednesday Night Baseball presented by Smirnoff Ice on ESPN. ESPN 360 at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. One-point game here in Game 1. Best of five for the title. Indiana's never been here before. Phoenix has been here on two separate occasions prior, they won it in 07. There's a blocking foul called on the perimeter. Rion January picking up her first. And the fifth team foul. You don't want to foul her because she's a 90% free throw shooter. Well, the one thing that has to happen is beyond January either needs to get over the screen or Tammy Sutton Brown's going to have to come out with her post player who's setting the screen and be available to show some defensive help. And not that you haven't worked on that. You're conscious of Penny Taylor coming in, but most of your defensive mindset coming in is to stop Diana Tarazi, to stop Cappy Pondexter. Here comes Penny Taylor, who's just been terrific. She's got 16. But if you've watched any of these playoffs, you know that Penny Taylor is, has a great ability to score the basketball. January on the baseline misses the layup. Taylor, again, the quick crossover and the foul. She'll go to the free throw line. Tammy Sutton Brown picking up her first. It's almost automatic with Penny Taylor. When she catches, she's putting her head down and driving to the basket. Sutton Brown with two at this point, and they're the two stars on the bench, both with three fouls. That just means it'll be more exciting in the second half. They'll be well rested. I like glasses half full kind of girl. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Pondexter also with three fouls. So you're taking away 39 points. That's what they average together. Tarazi and Pondexter. And yet, Phoenix is up by five. And we're in the 50s. And we're not at halftime yet. Well, for, for Indiana to have the ability to score, keep it, keep up with a high-scoring team, gives themselves an opportunity but can they expect to play these type games and win here in the finals? Hoffman inside, got it back, puts it in. I think if they do those kind of things right there, second chance opportunities, and what was working for them was driving and attacking off penetration. Taylor, they go right back to her, tipped out. 12 on the clock. Well, you get an idea, though. I mean, the last couple of possessions, she goes inside. That time with her back to the basket. You know what she can do beyond the arc as well. Well, Breon January is attempting to guard her. So the rest of the Indiana Fever team, have, they've got to be ready to show help. What do you know? Penny Taylor missed. Three-second difference. Shot clock, game clock. Sutton Brown. Uh-uh. One and done, they can take the final shot of the half. It looks like Sutton Brown is putting the shot up, expecting the call instead of staying in the play and making sure that she doesn't finish her work until the ball goes through the hoop. Got to go now. Tangela Smith over Bevelock. Well, not going to go. But the Mercury, remember they were down double digits in the first. Their star, Tarazi, with three fouls. Kathy Pondexer with three fouls. 
It was Penny Taylor who really saved them here. Three-point lead for Phoenix at home in game one. Rebecca, what do you have? Here with Tully Bevilacqua. Tully, you're getting most of the things you want offensively, but what can you do to slow them down on the defensive end? Well, first of all, we've got to smother the rebound to stop that uh, outlet. But we've got to take that three-point line away from them. I think they had six on us in the first quarter. We, we did a better job that quarter, but we've got to do a better job rotating, helping each other out and communicating. All right, Tully, thank you. Over with... Penny Taylor will send it to Heather Cox. Rebecca, thanks so much. Penny, 18 points. Now, you were a huge part of the success in the 2007 finals. Starting in that same fashion tonight, how much is it a conscious effort for you to really crank it up a notch in the finals? Yeah, I'm just trying to come in and give the team some energy. It's um, We're playing really good basketball right now. They're running the ball back at us. We've got to look at um, stopping them in the fast break um, and continue to run. We, we know that we can keep that game up for 40 minutes. Cappy and Diana both have three fouls. How does your role change in the second half because of that? Yeah, we want to make sure they're there for the end of the game, but they're smart players. They're not going to, um, you know, miss out on a game like this, so they'll be they'll be in there till the end. Penny, thanks so much. Thank you. I don't care if they drive the baseline. We have help there. Your eyes red and like you, it's a new scheme we put in. We've been doing it all year long. And it's not just one or two people. It's a lot of people that are not getting the job done. A little bit initial one with my feet. Come. They're not going to shoot it. They're not, they're not jacking jump shots. They're trying to get to the paint. Push it. Okay? Come on. Let's go. Let's open up our half. Both head coaches getting their teams ready for the second half here in the 2009 WNBA Finals presented by Adidas Game 1. Best of five series for the championship, and it's the home team, the Phoenix Mercury, with that three-point lead over the Indiana Fever. Terry Gannon back with Carolyn Peck, Rebecca Lobo, and Heather Cox with us as well. If I'm Corey Gaines right now, I might be the happiest guy in Arizona. I look up. My team's got a three-point lead, and the game is being played in the 50s in the first half. That's the pace that he wants. And your top two normal scores only have 10 points, but it's Penny Taylor who's getting it done. She's got 18 points in the first half. Diana Taurasi had to go to the bench in foul trouble, and Taylor said, I can pick up the slack, and you know what? Wherever you need me to. She was knocking down threes. She drove off all ball screens with penetration. She even went down low to post up. Penny Taylor has shown her versatility. Yes, yeah, it was huge in the first half because the stars weren't all that. Tamika Catchings just one point, 0 for 3 in the first half. And Tarazi, even though she's got eight, she really had to work for those. Rebecca Lobo, Heather Cox with reports right now. Let's start with Rebecca. Terry, Tamika Catchings obviously frustrated with herself. She said she needs to start attacking more. She said she was so worried about fouling, she wasn't even looking at the basket, and that has to change. Heather Cox caught up with Diana Tarazi. Rebecca, I also caught up with Corey Gaines, who said that the game plan doesn't change now that it's in the second half due to the fact that Cappy and Diana both have three fouls. But he did joke, unless I play Penny Taylor a little bit more, what must change is the tempo. He said we need to play a higher tempo game to help Cappy Pondexter get better shots. Just six fast break points in that first half. And then Diana Trossi on the way out said it wasn't ugly, but we will get the job done in the second half, guys. Well, and Heather Nancy Lieberman was right at, uh, during the break. The uh, halftime report stars have to be stars, and you would expect much more from Tamika Ketchings, Diana Tarazi, who had eight points in the first half, and Cappy Pondexter, who was held to two. Well, in order to win championships, you got to have a big three, and I, people say that, and I think it's because when you're st two stars don't show up, that third one can answer the call, and Penny Taylor has. Indiana goes right inside to the paint for their first possession of the second half, and Tammy Sutton Brown with the bucket, so it's a one-point lead for Phoenix. Angela Smith gets it up off the glass and in. Taylor sits on the bench to start the second half. 30 bench points in the first half for Phoenix. Only 26 from their starters. Katie Douglas buys the three. And we're tied. Indiana's doing a nice job of inside out. At least give post opportunities to touch the basketball. That would then create open shots for their perimeter shooters. Hoffman comes down with it. It's the sixth time that we've been tied up in this game. It's gone back and forth. Remember that double digit lead though for Indiana in the first quarter. Hoffman the three and gets it. Ebony, who shot 35% beyond the arc during the season. The 
one thing that Corey Gaines is having to do right now is call offenses. It was something he did not want to do versus L.A. He wanted an up-tempo game, and right now, every trip down the floor, he's talking to his point guard and calling out which offensive set he wants to run. Second foul on Katie Douglas. Even though he doesn't want to call an offense and really run a structured offense, how many plays do they have? 80. Yeah. Not 18, 8 0. That was play number 46, I think. <laughs> Give it to Tamika Johnson, get out of the way. Yeah, but most of those are reactionary plays. I mean, if the defense does this, this is what we do next. And after all, I mean, isn't that what coaching is? Try to teach players the game and get them to react, play instinctive basketball. So Rozzi's going to pull up. You knew it as soon as she got the ball. You could see it in her eyes, and all it takes is one jumper to get someone like her going. That's offense number one. That's right. <laughs> That's the first ten plays. Sutton Brown, the nice dish off the double from Katie Douglas. And Tammy's been a big part of this offense so far. 14 in the game. But one of the things Tammy Sutton Brown has got to do is she's looking for the call on her shot. She's got to continue to stay in the play and work until the ball goes through the basket. Now you knew at this point, or it looked like she was going to pull up. She, nobody picked her up. She's like, oh, that one's easy. Well, yeah, she's coming down the floor. She knew there was nobody in position to contest her shot. She got her feet set, knocked it down. Catching's in the lane, the strong move and in. Tamika gets a field goal, finally. And the two-point lead for the Fever. Again, I'll throw it out there, but can they play at this pace and beat Phoenix? Well, I think this is the perfect pace for Indiana. It's not just constant run and gun up and down the floor. They run when the opportunity presents itself, but they're forcing Phoenix to get set in the half court. What is Tammy Sutton Brown doing at half court? She's got to get down and be part of the offense. Hoffman does and won. Ebony Hoffman to the line, Tangela Smith, the foul. Watch Sutton Brown penetrate hard. Ebony Ho or Tammy Sutton Brown was up almost to the half court before she got into the play. Hey, if Ebony Hoffman's going to drive to the basket there, you still have to have rebounders there just in case that ball doesn't go through the hoop. Two fouls on Smith. Hoffman's really been a steady performer for Indiana. Started the last four years. Sixth year player from USC. In 2008, she was the most improved yep. player. Pondexter trying to get going here, and she does. Happy with a three. Just five in the game. She averages 19. Catchings. Line drive jumper cleared by Oldie. Tarazi fill on the lane. Out of control, the offensive foul, and that's four on Diana Tarazi. Tamika Catchings does a nice job. She recognizes that Tarazi is going to make a strong move to the basket. She gets her feet set. Body control draws the charge on Diana Tarazi. All right, so Corey Gaines takes a seat, and no one is up to check in for Diana Tarazi. Six-minute mark of the third quarter, and she has four fouls. Now, Malakwa on her knees calls for a timeout. And it will be a quick one. 20-second timeout, Indiana with that two-point lead. So if you're Corey Gaines, you, you leave Tarazi in right now? I think you got to pull her out. Pull her out, okay? So let we look at it. And Diana's still standing. He hadn't made a move yet. Move your feet on the rover. All they're doing is this. Getting the ball, getting the ball, and just driving. All right. That's all they're doing. Come on, That's it. Up right here. No, not, they're not even passing it. They're just driving. All right? Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Defense. One, two, three. Defense. And guess who's coming back out? Tarazi. She's got a lot of confidence in Tarasi that she's going to play smart. But with the way that Penny Taylor has been playing, 
you really don't need to risk that with Tarasi on the floor right now. And Tarasi, if anything, is aggressive. Uh, she knows one speed. So it's a gamble that Corey Gaines is taking here in the third quarter. But you, you also can take that gamble. You know that you, if she were to fell out, you know what you're going to get from Penny Taylor. So. Well, interesting. And, and guess who's in the middle in this Rover defense? Diana Tarazi. Yeah. They go right at her. And Sutton Brown has got to attack. A little bit of contact, but Tarazi just had to back off and let Sutton Brown go to the left hand. In Indiana, as long as the Phoenix Mercury stay in that rover defense with Dana Tarasi in the middle, they've got to continue to feed the post players. Tarasi goes to work. Sutton Brown a little bit late getting out to challenge. And the foul, her third. Diana cannot do very much right now. She's got four fouls. So all she can do is go straight up. Indiana needs to continue to attack. There's a huge size mismatch. I wonder who's going to get the ball the next time down the floor. Whoever Diana's guarding. Whoever Diana's guarding. You know, it's risky running that rover defense, knowing that Diana's got to go down to the block, leaving her to cover that middle position as well. And Tarazi, who's an 89% free throw shooter, misses the first. So that decision, if he stays with it here for a while, is going to be uh, critical to leave her in. Phoenix went from their 2-2-1 three-quarter court, now dropping back to a straight 2-3, and that puts Nicole Oldie in the middle as opposed to Tarazi. Takes some pressure off of Tarazi. January off the heel, cleared by Oldie. Nicole, the sixth-year player from Kansas State, came over in a trade from Minnesota. Tarazi as catching is caught on that screen a little bit short. Hoffman, they swing it. Willingham late getting out. We know Ebony can hit that. That's a deuce. Her foot was on the line, but she just hit a three a moment ago. She had hit a shooting slump in August, but it looks like she's she's shaking that off. Yep. There's that matchup. Tawazi kicks it to the corner. Johnson, the miss. And the loose ball foul is going to go on Laco Willingham. Willingham's first. Corey Gaines sticking with his star right now here in the third. Down by five. Welcome back to game one of the WNBA Finals, joined by Mercury head coach Corey Gaines. And coach, in the first three quarters, what has Indiana taken away that you need to get back in this fourth quarter? Well, the game is slowed down to a snail pace. It's fouls, timeouts, ball on the side, um, tip balls out of bounds. It's a real slow game, which is in their favor. The pace has to pick up. You've really kept Tamika Ketchings in check, but the other four starters all in double digits. Where does the defense need to improve? Well, they're getting the ball down low. They're gutting us up down low with the bigs. We're trying to take the outside away, and they're penetrating on us and getting the inside. Other thanks. So we open up the fourth quarter, and Indiana with the lead on the road. Henny Taylor, who had 18 in the first half, just two in that third quarter. And Diana Tarazi with just four in the third quarter. Here we go. Finals record for Indiana in the third, 33 points. Indiana's got to start the fourth quarter with Tamika Ketchings on the bench with four fouls. Douglas extends the lead with a three. Nope, the foot was on line, a two. Willingham, they'd love to get that going. That's how they beat you, even after made shots. What Indiana had done so well after made baskets was picking up the ball and taking away the vision of the point guard. Didn't happen that possession. A little more defensive intensity here to open up the force for Phoenix. Tarazi matched up with Douglas, which is tough with those four fouls. Katie fell down. Smith on the run. And they foul her before she can get to the bucket. Breon January with the foul. Katie Douglas just slipped 
lost her footing, which led to the transition basket or the transition opportunity for the Phoenix Mercury. They're going to call the foul on Tully Bevilacqua, but they might talk about this because it was January who committed the foul. There's the foul right there. Yeah, the foul is on January. And they put it up on the board, 41, Bevel Aqua, but it, you could see it was free on January. Corey Gaines wanted an intentional. Now, one thing that Indiana has proven so far here in game one, that they can stay right with Phoenix in a high-scoring game. Well, they, they've proven that they, that, that they can score with Phoenix and they can defend, and they have been able, for the most part, to control the tempo of this ball game, and that's been done by rebounding. Haven't made an announcement yet. It would be four on Bevilacqua, just the second on January, so we'll get that to you. Pondexter, again, little fadeaway. Captain Pondexter heating up here in the second half. He's got 11. Reach in on Johnson. See, Indiana's scoring just 75 points per game in the playoffs, and they have 88 already. Taylor's still on the bench. You know, this is what Corey Gaines was talking about. The stoppage of play with it be a foul and having to take it out on the sideline. It doesn't keep the tempo the movement of the game going like Phoenix likes to play in. Hoffman has absolutely led the way on offense. Ebony Hoffman with another one. By far, this is a career high. 25 points. On Dexter. A little bit short. Indiana content. You just bring it up and run their offense. And the further we go here, the more pressure is on Phoenix at home here in game one. Nobody's got Tarasi. That's the main person you have to find. And Hoffman picks up the foul. That's three on Ebony. Okay, but the Phoenix Mercury have to recognize that Ebony Hoffman has hit the three. Now, Tammy Sutton Brown has attracted a lot of defense down low, but look at Ebony Hoffman. She's wide open at the top of the key. There's no rotation. Tarasi is too far over, worried about the skip pass. Ebony Hoffman, you know what she's saying? Look, I really kind of tried to follow her there before she took the shot. And, and now you send her to the line. Tarazi buys the first. So but catching he's back on. Kitty Douglas takes a uh, a seat right now. The biggest problem that Indiana had in that possession is nobody picked up the basketball. They were so busy running back, and you got to wonder if does fatigue set in where you're not thinking when you're running back in transition, finding your person and getting matched up early. Yeah, so much of the offense for Phoenix happens that way too. Catchings. Here come the Mercury, Willingham. Taken away by catching, she does that so well. January out ahead of everyone. Easy lay in. You saw who got that steal. Defensive player of the year, Tamika Catchings. You get a little bit complacent with that pass and she's right on it. What? Make it work, make it work. You got one, you got one. Pressure up the floor from the fever. When you have Tamika Catchings on the floor on defense, you cannot telegraph your passes. You cannot make lazy passes because she's going to pick you off every time. So that's 17 points off of turnovers for the fever tonight. Hondexter, the rebound, and one. She'll go to the line. But you watch, Sutton Brown was late on the switch. 
and allow Pondex to get to the get to the glass and then give Cappy Pondex the opportunity for the offensive rebound. Now she's at the free throw line. Bevilacqua picks up the foul, so that's her fifth. That last foul, which should have been called on January, was given to Bevilacqua, so she's one away from the limit. The lead down to four. And if Bevilacqua would were to pick up that fifth foul, the Indiana Fever still have Tamika Dixon, who was big for them in game three against the Detroit Shock. Foul called on Nicole Oldie, not on Tarazi, who went to the deck early. That would have been five on Tarazi. Kind of a collective sigh here in U.S. Airways Center when they put up the number 3-0. Well, the whole coaching staff for the Phoenix, Mer Phoenix Mercury wanted to make sure. They were like, Nicole Oldie, that's who it was. It wasn't on Diana Taurasi. Sutton Brown with the miss. Indiana been so good at the free throw line. They hit the last 16 in that decisive game three win over Detroit. That was the difference down the stretch because in executing their offense, what they were doing against Detroit was attacking and penetrating to the basket and getting themselves to the free throw line. And Sutton Brown was huge down the stretch, knocking down her free throws. Different nights for the two stars. Tarazi, relatively quiet. Catchings in foul trouble as well. Just one point early in this one, the first half. And as you mentioned, Tamika Dixon comes in for Tully Bevilacqua now. Maybe Hoffman switched out on Kathy Pondex for that. That's a bad mismatch. Sutton Brown late getting out. Hoffman runs it down in the corner. Juana Bonner up, set to check in for Phoenix. So is Jessica Moore for Indiana. No chance. And back to the Mercury. <laughs> Penny Taylor checking in. She has been on the bench for a while. Willingham to the bench. We got Tarazi and Penny Taylor on the floor together, along with Cappy Pondexter. A lot of offense for Phoenix. It is. It's some tough matchup problems because of trying to guard a Tarasi or a Taylor, especially when they set in the on-ball screens, and that's something that Indiana has not done well thus far. Difficult night for Tarazi, even though she has 14. See, I would give the ball right back to Ketchings right now. Tamika Dixon says, uh-uh. I can knock this down. The lead is seven. The veteran in one of the original four still playing in the WNBA from the inaugural season. The only one left in the playoffs now. Foul on Jessica Moore. And that's four on her. So Bonner to the line. Time running out. Time for the Mercury to make a move. They're down by seven at home here in game one. ESPN's presentation of the WNBA Finals is presented by Adidas. Impossible is nothing. And in part by IHOP. IHOP's gone NFL. Try the all-pro lineup only at IHOP. Come hungry, leave happy. Little more than five and a half minutes left here in game one. Indiana on the road with a seven-point lead over Phoenix as we check out our HP photos of the WNBA Finals, Carolyn. Well, you look, Diana Taurasi has, is in foul trouble, so there's nothing she can do but go straight up, which gives an easy layup for Tammy Sutton-Brown. Then Ebony Hoffman has been hot beyond the three-point line. Phoenix has got to recognize that. You can't leave her wide open. Go to WNBA.com to vote for the HP Photo of the Year. Ebony Hoffman, a career playoff high, one away from a career high in any game. She's got 25 and second round, one away from a career playoff high. They've been huge in this offense. And they've needed to be. 
Yes, Katie Douglas has 19 points, but when you, the Indiana Fever relies so much on Tamika Catchings and Katie Douglas, and to get that kind of production from their post players yeah. is a great sign for the Indiana Fever. Donna Bonner's got eight after that free throw. And make it nine. Taylor matched up with Douglas. Tarazi with catchings. There goes January to work. Quick steal, the quick hands from Tamika Johnson. Fifth year player out of LSU running the show now. Douglas, good defense on Taylor. Bonner to the left hand. How about that move all the way down the lane and in. Best player off the bench this year in the WNBA in double figures. Hoffman trying to answer, backing in on Tarazi, who just had to back off and let her go. She did, and Ebony Hoffman almost, she was fading away. She needs to go to Tarazi to get her in even more foul trouble. Diana pulls up from deep and knocks down the three. It's a two-point game. Annie Myers, the GM, loves it here. Hall of Famer. Penny Taylor called. As Hoffman is down, grabbing that right ankle. <laughs> See what happened here. You know what? She twisted the ankle right there. Yeah, yeah Penny makes a good case. Ebony just twisted the ankle and went down. She's been suffering with tendonitis in that left ankle. So Taylor picks up the foul. That's right. okay. You dribble over. You guys set the pick this way, opposite. And she'll come right across. All right? You got it? Come on. Give us that right here. First fall on Penny Taylor. You heard the strategy in that huddle. Now we're done. All right, guys. Now the team is back in. We're running some three down and some five down. Or some three up. Okay, here we go. Here we go. as the head coach for the Seattle Storm, coaching the ABL before that Lynn Dunn did with Portland. And now in her second year at Indiana. Here we go. 427 left in a two-point game. Hoffman with that ankle goes to the bench. Oldie trying to stay with Douglas. Hits the backboard. Fever doing a nice job getting back on defense. And everyone matched up, especially recognizing where Diana Taurasi and Penny Taylor are. Beyond the double, Taurasi. Little daylight off the bounce. No, Bonner runs it down, loses it, stays at this end. Phoenix ball. Bevilacqua set to check in. You heard him say... They're in the bonus. 14 fouls right now in Indiana. So the next one, and they're over the limit. Three team fouls on Phoenix. Taylor around the screen. Somehow gets inside. And we are tied at 98. They're on their feet here in Phoenix. Nicole Oldie battles inside, and it's going to go against Tammy Sutton Brown. They call three seconds in the lane. It's a watch. Penny coming off the screen. Jessica Moore is late rotating over to pick up Penny Taylor. If you're a step late, you might as well say it's over. Sutton Brown with three in the lane at the other end. Good defense by catchers. Catchings on Tarazi, and Douglas matched up with Taylor. Ebony Hoffman 
comes back in. Doesn't look like she's moving too smoothly, though. Now she's got to guard Tarazi. They double. Swing it around. Johnson gets it back. Fresh 24. Tarazi the scoop. No, but the foul. We heard Lynn Dunn talk about you didn't box out. When you get Diana Taurasi, when you don't rebound, you get second chance opportunities. Taurasi is going to make plays. Five fouls on Tammy Sutton Brown. Taurasi, an 89% free throw shooter, misses another one. That's the announcer jinx, Terry. Wow. Missed a couple of those tonight. Didn't think it would work on her, of all people. <laughs> of all people. Phoenix in the lead. The last time they led it was 63-61. Sutton Brown's got to establish position on Penny Taylor down low. Catching Bonner on her back. Sutton Brown doesn't leave the floor with the jumper. I'd say that's an ideal shot for the Indiana Fever. And what they've done so well has been able to penetrate and get to the free throw line. Tamika Johnson in this place explodes. Johnson with 13 in the game and the biggest shot so far from her. Well, Tarasi penetrate the and she's able to kick out. Find Tamika Johnson. She came to Phoenix in order to win a championship. She's playing like she wants one. Back with a reminder, ABC Saturday Night Football has number eight Oklahoma taking on number 17 Miami or number seven USC against number 24 the Cal Bears. ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific time. So the Mercury has come back to take a lead in game one. 102 to 98, each team with a full, and Phoenix also with a 20 and a foul to give. If you're Lynn Dunn right now, Carolyn, what are you telling your team? Well, you've got to go back to what got you the lead at the beginning of the game, and what that is is attacking the paint, whether that be going to your post players inside or attacking off penetration. Use your own ball screen options or pump, pump fake and drive to the basket. Ebony Hoffman, who has been critical in this game tonight, career high for her, 27. She's hobbling with that ankle injury, which she picked up a couple of minutes ago. Sutton Brown setting the screen for Douglas. There's the switch. Oldie, she lost her for a moment. Tarazi the rebound. She's played a long time here in this second half with four fouls. Tarazi has. And she's played smart. She ended up trying to guard Ketchings down low on the on the post. And what she does is move her feet and not let Ketchings pin her body against her. Johnson almost picked up the pivot foot. Tawazi gets a little room and gets it back. Game one, remember, it's best of five here in the finals. It was best of three in the playoffs to this point. Bonner. Cleared by Douglas. Two here in Phoenix. Two if necessary in Indianapolis and back here for game five should they need it. Sutton Brown can't get it to go. It'll stay at this end. It's good, good offense by the Indiana Fever. Why do you throw the ball in the can? Especially trying to find Sutton Brown down the middle of the lane, but you see Lynn Dunn talking there. Wants the ball to go inside to Catchings because Diana Taurasi's in foul trouble. Catchings the spin. Johnson held her. Somehow Tamika got the ball up there. Now, Tamika, you're not going to argue that one. No, she's not. Okay. No, in Indiana. Me! But she gets her arm hung up with catch as she, uh, Tamika Catchings as she spins.
spins on the reverse dribble. She just kind of got caught in the mousetrap. Yeah. Both teams over the limit now. Indiana shooting 56% for the game. That would be a finals record, and yet they're losing. And this is a team that was the worst shooting team in the league this year at 40%. Two-point game. time ago in this game when Indiana led by double digits. First quarter. There's your matchup. Taraji with the spin. Bonner offensive foul on Juana Bonner. So we go to the other end. That's two on the rookie. January, another rookie running point for the Fever. Spins in the lane, and we are tied at 102. Ninth tie of the game. Bring on January likens the WMA playoffs to the NCAA tournament. You got to win to continue to play, and she really has been a big player down the stretch, stepping up big. Well, especially with Tully Be Bevilacqua being out of the game. Taylor wants to work against Douglas. Gets help, swatted away, but the foul. Ebony Hoffman coming over to help commits the foul. Four on her. You watch the determination of Brian January. To the right, reverse spin, able to... Use her body to screen off Tamika Johnson to get the layup. Taylor with 22 in the game. 18 of those in the first half. 90% from the line. One point lead. Penny, a former All-Star and a veteran from Australia. Part of the 07 championship run. One of two catchings the rebound. So you got 26.6 left. A little bit more than a three second difference. So here you go. You really can't ask for a whole lot more than this in game one, huh? 103, 102. Well, I, 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 I'd rather go try to score early now. I don't want to play with holding. So Lynn Dunn talking to her assistant coaches before heading over to the huddle. Under pressure. I mean, I feel like we need to try to score. Yeah. First good shot. Yeah. yeah. First good shot. Hey, now guys, listen up. We're not going to worry about whether they're in a man or zone. We're running our curl play. Okay, Ebony, you're screening for Katie. She's coming right through here. Okay, Bree, you're coming here. All right, now Tammy, be alert right here. Catch is going to make a decision. If she hits right here, we're looking for that cut back there. All right. Yes, I don't want to hold the ball, hold the ball, hold the ball, then all of a sudden they start trapped up and I, it's, too, it's too risky. I'd rather try to score right now, all right? All right, now, Ebony, you're in the corner, so if we go to Katie, she's got a shot or a drive. All right, catch, when you in about here, here, we're looking back to you to drive, okay? I'll curl play, all right? Tammy, be alert right here for that pass. the strategy well what Lynn Dunn is worried about being down one if you try to hold the ball throughout the shot clock you have a high potential of turning the ball over especially the last few possessions that they had Tammy Sutton Brown fumbled the ball Katie Douglas turned the ball over so what she said is we got to get their first good look an opportunity to basket she talked about Katie Douglas driving to the basket or kicking and having catchings drive to the basket. Either way, you give yourself an opportunity for a layup or get yourself to the free throw line. Indiana out of timeouts. Neither team with a foul to give. 26.9, they're going to call it, left on the game clock. Now, which is different than what we had when we went to the timeout. So that's why June Corteau is, Corteau is over there. 
trying to sort this out. And they put three seconds back on the shot clock. You have plenty of options if you're Indiana. I mean, Hoffman's had a huge game. You don't just have to go with your stars here, but Kenny Douglas certainly a threat from the outside. Sutton Brown inside. Well, it got the size, and especially with Tarasi in foul trouble, you go at her. Does that play here? Well, she's got four. If you have the potential of going, if it goes overtime, you know, she's got five. But right now, she's got to go after trying to win the game and play the best defense possible. Tarazi guarding, catching, who takes it out. Douglas around a screen. They can't get it to her. It's January. Guarded by Pondexter. Hoffman. Bonner comes out. Pondexter staying with January. The rookie threw it away. And a foul is called on, I believe, on Ketchings. Tamika Ketchings picks up the foul with 14.8 left. Catchings gets tangled with Tarasi. Five fouls on Catchings and a quick foul in the corner as Pondexter gets the ball. So a one-point lead for Phoenix. Cappy Pondexter, an 88% free-throw shooter, goes to the line. And Catchings still arguing that foul. They have no timeouts. Play up. Switch everything. No threes. No threes. Now the foul, quick foul, Breon January. Stop the clock so that you have an opportunity should she make these free throws to go down and possibly get the three. On extra four of four at the line tonight now and a two-point lead. Got them both. No timeouts left for Indiana. Here's the full court pressure. January on the run. Under 10 seconds left. Douglas knocks down a three. And we're tied at 105. You gotta love the playoffs. Bonner end to end. Pondexter the follow. No. Tipped up. That's it. We go to overtime. Wow. Katie Douglas sending us to overtime in game one here in Phoenix. Well, Bonner has an opportunity. Doesn't make the layup. Cappy tries to tap in. But no, we go to overtime. How about the good looks they just had at it? Well, Katie Douglas steps behind Tammy Sutton Brown to knock down the three. Hey, we got some more time to play. That's what the playoffs are all about. Douglas with 22 into overtime we go. U.S. Airways Center here in Phoenix. Game one is not over yet. Game two is Thursday at 9 Eastern. And then we go to Indianapolis Sunday for game three. Game four if necessary in Indy. And back here for game five next Friday. All in ESPN 2. Not done yet, though. 105 to 105 off that three-pointer by Katie Douglas. And then the chances at the other end. Bonner had a good look. Dexter had a good look. But the extra period and a combined finals record already, 210 points. Heather, what'd you hear in the huddle? Well, for Phoenix and Corey Gaines, it wasn't as much about X's and O's as it was about emotion, motivation. Corey Gaines saying, let's just play basketball. He wants up-tempo style this entire five minutes. And his star, Diana Taurasi, was as emotional and as frustrating and as mad as I have seen her all season. Throwing towels, shaking her fist, very frustrated that they didn't get it done in regulation. But a good sign for Mercury fans. Phoenix 4-0 in overtime this season. And another good sign for Phoenix fans. You look at the records in overtime. Indiana 2-2. Two and two. Tamika Ketchings has five fouls. Tammy Sutton Brown with five fouls. Tully Bevilacqua with five fouls for Indiana. 
Phoenix ball to open up the overtime period. And you can talk about continuing to play at the same pace. It's tough once you get in overtime. Hondexter, strong move and a two-point lead. What Indiana did that last series was switch all screens and Pondex to recognize it and was able to drive to the paint. Phoenix not relying on the three-point shot. Swatted away, but a foul underneath. Well, Cappy does a nice job. She recognizes that catch is going to get screened. That switches Ebony Hoffman on her. She can take any post player off the dribble all day, every day. And Diana Tarazi just joined the list of players with five fouls. Tamika so Johnson with four. And Douglas ties it up at 107. Catchings matched up with Tarazi, who pulls up the follow by Bonner. Sutton Brown got caught sleeping. Bonner attacking the offensive boards. That's what's kept and gotten the Phoenix Mercury in this ball game. Second chance opportunities. But Indiana's shooting 57% and 50% beyond the arc in this game. That's unheard of for them. Douglas gets a step on Oldie and has the speed to get there. Bonner ahead of the pack. The easy lay-in. So Corey Gaines wanted to keep playing 94 feet, and that's what they're doing. And you notice watching him on the sideline, he's not calling plays. As soon as they get possession of the ball, he wants him to run. They've got 111 points. He's out of the 81 plays by now. Catchings the three. Giving the Fever a one-point lead. Sutton Brown's looking tired to me. Comes down with the rebound anyway, though. Douglas, who does not look tired at all. Katie, who's been to the finals twice with Connecticut, taken away on the line. It'll be Phoenix basketball. Sutton Brown thought she was fouled. She may have been. Yeah, but when you get to this point of the season, you're in the finals. You gotta finish, right? You gotta finish. Yeah. To Rossi, slips inside. The reach, is it on catchings? If it is, she's done. And it is on Tamika Catchings, and that'll be six on the Defensive Player of the Year in the WNBA. Eight points tonight, not what she wanted offensively. She averages 15. It, Lynn Dunn, though, knows you're going to get the effort every night from Tamika Catchings. Bevel Aqua in. Well, I think we got from Tamika Catchings. The game is advertised. She was the defensive player of the year. She had six. She had six rebounds, two block shots, several deflections. She's had the assignment of chasing Diana Tarasi this whole entire game. Phoenix averages 93 points a game. They've got 113. Indiana only averages 77 a game. Douglas off the glass, another strong move by Katie Douglas. She has carried them in the last couple of minutes in regulation, now the overtime. Cross to Tarazi. Bevel Aqua trying to check her now. Tarazi just kind of elbows her out of the way and knocks down a jumper. Now, the best way to try to guard, and I emphasize try to guard Diana Taurasi is to not allow her to catch the basketball because once she does, she's like a, magi a magician. She can make just about anything happen. She's got 22. Douglas looking for a screen, gets the switch. She's got all the honor. She's gone by her twice already, backs up, off balance, and knocks another one down. 
What, what do we say? Stars have to be stars? Stars have to be stars. And Terry, I had the privilege of coaching Katie Douglas, and she was a big reason Purdue you did. won the championship in 1999. On Dexter answers at the other end of one point lead. Did you teach her all these moves? Like, she showed me a few of these. Douglas with 30 in the game. Looking for more. Uh-uh. Somebody's got to find Tarasi. Wow. Even for Tarazi, I'm not sure that's the shot they wanted. January ahead of the pack doesn't have numbers. Oh, Ebony thought about it, didn't she? And Lynn Dunn wants to get things back together offensively. It's a good timeout. Katie Douglas looked gassed with the momentum of the game going. An opportunity for your star that's left on the floor with catchings on the bench to catch a breath. Yep. A lot of tired fever players on that bench right now. Yeah. Hey, bro. She's got Katie Tyler on Yeah, Okay, guys, we're going line to five up for Katie. Okay, so Katie's coming up here. Uh, Katie, you're the three. Okay, um, three, you're the two. So it's going to be two, one. I mean, uh, three, I want you to inbound the ball, okay? Kat Tully, you're here and four and five, okay? So Katie's coming up here. All right, and then we're going into five up. Katie's the, Tammy's here. Ebony, I want you here. Okay, Tully, I want you over here, and I Bree, you come to here, right here. So Bree's here. We got five up right here. Okay. Be ready to type the driving kick. We got one foul to give. Okay, Ebony, be ready. She comes down in here, boom. Come down in here, kick, kick. Okay. Right, here we go. So 50.8 left. Katie Douglas, some kind of night. This is the one that sent it into overtime. She's had to step up big with Tamika Ketchings going to the bench, filing out. She's done it in a number of different ways, but she's in the attack mode. Been able to knock down shots and keep the Indiana Fever in this ballgame. Remember, Tamika Ketchings has fouled out. Bevilacqua, Breon January, Ebony Hoffman, Tammy Sutton Brown, and Katie Douglas for Indiana. Nicole Oldie, Diana Tarazi, Duana Bonner, Kathy Pondexter, and Penny Taylor for Phoenix. Here we go. There's the matchup the Fever wanted. Oldie trying to stay with her and forces the tough shot. Tarazi had bought her ahead of the pack, didn't see her. One point lead and the ball. So now Indiana's counting on getting a stop right now, but when you've got Cappy Pondexter on the floor. Big time shot by Pondexter, and it's a three point lead for Phoenix. She's come up big in the second half, answering with 20 points, and those two were huge. Too many weapons to try to stop. You can't key on anybody in that offense. Penny Taylor, Diana Tarazi, Kathy Pondexter. But we go the other way, and 20.2 yeah, yeah, yeah. left. Okay. Let's go. Line to that. All three together. One, two, three together. Line to hold them. Go. A one-possession game, and one Katie Douglas three-pointer away from tying it up. Eight in overtime already. 
It'll be Pondexter who will match up with Douglas as Tamika Ketsu's watches. Katie Douglas has hit four threes. Ebony Hoffman has hit two. And Tony Bevilacqua hit two big ones in the game against Detroit in game three. January, guarded by Tarazi. Douglas takes the handoff, backs up, three, no. Tarazi high into the air for the rebound, and now you got a foul, and they do. Indiana got the shot they wanted. They ran a nice dribble handoff once Breon January got the ball to Ebony Hoffman up top. Run the dribble handoff. Katie Douglas did nice move on Bonner with the step back. I've seen her hit that shot before. It just didn't fall this time. They had a foul to give there. January took it to try to inbound it and tipped out. It'll be Phoenix basketball. 3.9 left. And the quick foul by January that will send Pondexter to the line. Five of five tonight from the free throw line is Campy Pondexter. And with one can make it a two possession game. the line for two she misses the first she watched the switch the step back she hits frozen door a bonner just unable to knock the shot down big free throw made by Pondexter. four point lead three seconds left and that'll do it phoenix survives at home to take game one. Tarazi with 22 in the game in a big second half. Katie Douglas, what an effort though. 30 points in the game. The three-pointer that sent it to overtime. How about that for a final score? 120 to 116. Finals record most points by both. Finals record by Phoenix. They had three players with 20 plus points. Well, and Kathy Pondexter had 22 points in the second half. Heather Cox is with Diana Tarazi. Heather? Terry, thanks so much. Diana, at halftime, you looked up at me and said, it's ugly, but you promised you'd get it done. How did you have that confidence? We, we've kind of proven every game that can, we, we can win a little bit different. And tonight, you know, we didn't do anything particularly well. We didn't shoot the ball well. Turned it over a little bit too much, but, you know, at the end, we made plays to win the game. And that's, at this point, the only thing that matters. When you and Cappy were quiet because of foul trouble, how important was Penny Taylor on the bench? You know, that's why we're where we're at right now. Um, when she's here, we're a tough team, and uh, she was amazing tonight. How did the complexion of this game change in overtime when Tamika Ketching fouled out? Oh, well, you take away, you know, one of the best players in the world. It's going to affect your team a little bit, but, you know, Katie Douglas was doing some damage, so they didn't miss her much. Diana, congratulations on a special night. MVP for you guys. Yeah, Heather, MVP this afternoon and a win in game one tonight, 120 to 116. Tarazi with... 22 in the game, Pondexter with 23, Penny Taylor huge in the first half, she had 23 overall, and Katie Douglas with 30 in the game. Coming up next, homecoming, Dwayne Wade, the WNBA Finals continue Thursday right here in Phoenix, 8.30 is WNBA shoot around. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Carolyn Peck, Heather Cox, Rebecca Lobar, our entire crew, I'm Terry again, and Phoenix wins game one, best of five. Good night, everybody.